the older adult patient. The number of adults over 65 years of age continues to increase in the United States and is projected to grow to 98 million in 2060. The first of the baby boom generation turned 65 in 2011. They are the first generation to benefit from systemic fluoride in community water supplies and topically in toothpaste. The older adult population is retaining more natural teeth, many with full dentitions, motivated to maintain and improve oral health, seeking more preventive procedures for oral health than in previous years. Dental hygienists will be challenged by the complex needs of the aging population. As the lifespan of individuals increases, so does the incidence of chronic disease. Dental hygienists need to be competent in providing safe, preventive, and therapeutic services for older adult patients in all types of dental settings. An increasing number of dental hygienists will specialize in the care of older adults and be employed in long-term care, home health care, and residential facilities. Tooth loss increases with age, but not because of the aging process. Dental caries and periodontal disease are the major cause of tooth loss. Periodontal disease in the older adult population represent the cumulative effects of long-standing, undiagnosed, untreated, or neglected chronic infection. Dental caries in the adult population is associated with gingival recession, salivary hypofunction, use of xerostoma medications, diet and fermentable carbohydrates, poor oral hygiene. The use of fluoride can provide valuable protection to teeth and expose root surfaces for all ages. It is unfortunate some adults, older adults, believe fluoride is only for children. Aging, biological and chronological age. From a chronological viewpoint, 65 years of age is the entry point for old age. Gerontology has been divided into a period of 65 and older into subgroups. Biological age is not synonymous with chronological age. Signs of aging appear at different chronological ages in, a different, in different individuals. Aging is a process with many physiological changes. A person can be biologically old at age 65, and others can be physically fit at 75. Classification by function. The degree of general health and physical activity provides a classification system, functional age, not based on chronological age, but how the older adult actually performs various activities. Relative to the degree of impairment, older persons may be functionally independent, frail, or functionally dependent. Classification by function is more useful and is defined by activities of daily living and instrumental activities of daily living. Primary, secondary, and optimal aging. Primary aging is also referred to as normal aging. Age-related changes that occur in the body system advancing at an individual rate. These age-related changes are universal, intrinsic, and progressive. Examples was like your skin wrinkling. Secondary aging is also referred to as impaired aging, age-related changes due to disease that leads to impairment. These age-related changes are associated to trauma and chronic disease, such as heart disease. Optimal aging is also referred to as successful aging. Aging is slowed or altered due to preventive measures to avoid negative changes. Examples, eating a healthy diet and daily physical activity. Normal physiologic aging. Primary normal changes with aging are physiologic. Secondary pathologic aging influences and accelerates the aging process. Each age level brings changes in the body metabolism, activity of the cells, endocrine balance, and mental processes. In a healthy person free of chronic diseases and medications with their potential side effects, the tissue changes of aging may be more subtle, appear at a later age, and be influenced by the person's lifestyle. Skin. Thin, thin, wrinkled, and dry, with pigmented spots and loss of tone. Reduced tolerance to temperature extre extremes and solar exposure. Normal physiologic changes that occur as the individual ages are universal, progressive, intrinsic, and unavoidable. These changes vary between each individual and the body's systems. During aging, an overall gradual reduction in functional capacities occurs in most organs, with a de decrease in cell metabolism and numbers of active cells. The following provides a summary, summary of physiologic changes that occur due to normal aging process. Musculoskeletal system. Bone volume mass decreases gradually after the age of 40. Loss of muscle function, diminished muscular strength and speed of response. Curvature of cervical vertebrae due to a decrease in bone density and atrophic changes to cartilage and muscle. Joints may stiffen because of loss of elasticity in the ligaments. Cardiovascular system. Decline in cardiac output, minimal increase in the size of the left ventricle wall. Blood vessels become less elastic and flexible. Lumen of vessels decrease in the size with resilient 
reduction of blood supply to organs, especially the liver and kidneys, increased peripheral resistance, atherosclerosis or fatty deposits on inner walls of the arteries is associated with aging, diet, smoking, and lack of exercise. Changes in cardiovasculature do not affect function under normal non-stressful conditions. The respiratory system. Vital capacity is progressively diminished leading to decreased efficiency of oxygen carbon dioxide exchange. Skeletal changes weaken respiratory muscles, which limit chest expansion and reduce effective ventilation. Less effective cough reflex, increased risk for respiratory infections. Gastrointestinal system. Production of hydrochloric acid and other secretions dead gradually decrease. Peristalsis is slowed. Decreased absorptive functions can affect nutrition and medications. The central nervous system. Intellectual or cognitive function is slowed, but it's not lost. Complex tasks may become more difficult. Short-term memory declines. Long-term memory remains constant. Peripheral nervous system, decrease in tactile sensitivity, decrease proprioception, the sense of one's position in space, risk for falls. Sensory systems, age-related vision problems include presbyopia, decrease in visual acuity, more light is needed, peripheral vision, color clarity, problems with blues and greens. Decreased dilation and constriction of pupils results in difficulty adjusting to changes in light and problems with glare. Age-related hearing problems include presbycusis. Thicker and drier serum wax contributes to hearing loss. Decrease in the ability to hear high-frequency tones and tinnitus. Management of the dental hygienist patient with vision and hearing is discussed at a later chapter. The endocrine system. Decrease in thyroid efficiency, decreased basal metabolic rate, altered thermoregulatory system, so they're sensitive to cold, they may not respond to infection and increase temperature. Your immune system. The immune system declines with age. Among individuals, the degree of decline varies greatly. Age-related changes in the skin and mucous membranes decrease effectiveness of the first line of defense against invading substances. Thymus gland decrease in size, decline in T-cell function. With age, there may have an increase in autoimmune disorders. Changes in the immune system result in an increased incidence of infections. Older adults need to seek immunization for influenza, varicella zoster virus, and pneumococcal pneumonia. Vaccinations for hepatitis A, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, varicella, and meningococcal infections are recommended. Cognitive change. Cognitive change can distract the individual's attentions away from their daily activities. The older adult patient struggles with numerous demands, which can affect the ability to function, especially the ability to concentrate. Factors such as excess light and noise can distract the older adult from perceiving relative relevant information. Supportive interventions to aid an older adult with cognitive changes to maintain normal life activities are listed later. Tooth loss and gingival inflammation are associated with lower cognitive performance. Pathology and disease. Factors that influence disease. An older person's health status is influenced by many factors, biologic, environmental, psychosocial, psychologic, and lifestyle factors influence longevity. Genetically, a person may belong to a family that has exhibited resistance to disease factors. Healthy dietary habits and regular regular exercise can prevent or minimize disease. The following risk factors include disease states, tobacco use, all forms, use of alcohol, obesity, and overweight. Decreased immunological function in aging is a factor for increased susceptibility of both men and women to human immunodeficiency virus, HIV infection, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS, and other sexually transmitted diseases, STDs. Associations between periodontitis and specific systemic diseases include atherosclerotic disease, diabetes mellitus, respiratory infections, rheumatoid arthritis. The incidence of disease is higher in individuals from lower educational and socioeconomic backgrounds. Response to disease. The disease affect the older adult age group also occur in young people. However, there are differences such as lessened revert reserve capacity. An older adult may not view the classic symptoms of disease as a younger person. Chronic conditions associated with aging. Although many older adults function well and live independently in the community, the incidence of chronic disease increases with advancing age. Individuals may have more than one chronic illness. The most common chronic conditions are osteoarthritis, 
visual and hearing impairment, cardiovascular diseases, and diabetes. Because of the number of chronic conditions, patients may be taking a large number of medications, polypharmacy, which can exacer exacerbate xerostomia and increase the possibility of drug interactions. Alzheimer's disease. Dementia is a severe impairment of cognitive abilities, notably thinking, memory, and judgment. Alzheimer's disease is a non-reversible type of dementia and the most common of all dementias. The etiology, there's two types, early onset, which is rare. It's reported in individuals in their 30s and 40s. And then there's late onset, which is the most common in people over 65. The etiology is unknown and theories include genetics, environment, nutrition, free radicals, and infectious agents. The average duration is 8 to 10 years from the onset of symptoms to death. The symptoms and stages, the common impairment of Alzheimer's disease may be divided into overlapping stages and may extend up to 20 years. The stages of Alzheimer's disease, stage one, normal function, stage two, very mild, stage three, mild, stage four, moderate, stage five, moderately severe, stage six, severe, stage seven, very severe. Keep in mind the stages are generally guides. Symptoms vary greatly. Not every individual with Alzheimer's disease will experience the same symptoms or progress at the same rate. The treatment. There is no proven treatment to prevent or cure the disease. Treatment is designed to support the family as well as the patient. It requires a prolonged multidisciplinary effort. Medications are prescribed for the patient with mild to moderate symptoms. Medications prescribed to address behavioral problems include antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications, antipsychotics, Anticonvulsants may be prescribed for the small percentage of individuals who have seizures. The dental hygiene man management considerations. There are specific dental hygiene care considerations for the patient with early and later Alzheimer's disease. There is a link between periodontal uh, disease and Alzheimer's disease. Brain inflammation can result from periodontal bacteria and the entry of pathogen products into the brain. The goals of the dental hygiene care preserve oral health and function, prevent future oral and systemic disease, provide comfort. The dental hygiene care plan, consider the current stage of the patient's disease, provides a plan for comprehensive care and anticipatory of future decline in oral health. Undiagnosed patients with patient's behavior is suspect. A referral to the patient's physician is made. Osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is the most common form of arthritis and involves a progressive loss of articular cartilage. Management of patients with arthritis is discussed later. But the symptoms are intermittent joint pain, stiffness upon rising, and crepitation or creaking joints. Treatment, physical therapy, exercise, rest, reduced stress on joints, dietary modifications, and drug therapy. Dental hygiene man management considerations. Keep appointments short. Schedule afternoon appointments. Allow breaks to uh, rest the jaw. Alcoholism. The effects of alcohol use. Owing to age-related primary physiological changes, older drinkers may experience more detrimental health-related effects compared with younger drinkers. Older adults require less alcohol for adverse effects to occur. Excessive use of alcohol by older adults may have more severe health-related consequences, exacerbate medical and emotional problems associated with aging, predispose to adverse drug reactions with prescription and over-the-counter medications, be associated with major depressive disorders, and the dental hygiene management considerations, management of dental hygiene patient with a substance-related disorder um, is discussed later. Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is a bone disease involving loss of mineral content and bone mass. It is common in individuals, older adults, older than 60, and the incident increases with age. Although most prominent in postmenopausal women, the condition may also occur at other ages and in men. The causes, endocrine, hormonal disturbances, depletion of estrogen after menopause, inadequate intake of calcium and or vitamin D, or defective absorption of calcium or vitamin D metabolism. Prevention. Prevention is the first line of defense against osteoporosis. Adequate calcium and vitamin D intake during adolescence and early adulthood is critical to forming peak bone mass. The minimum requirements for both calcium and vitamin D increase with age. Load-bearing exercise is necessary to maintain bone mass. Risk factors. A number of risk factors have been identified, some of which work together. From the risk factors, a list of methods for long-term prevention can be derived female gender, positive family history, Caucasian or Asian ethnicity, worldwide, Blacks are the least affected. 
low calcium and vitamin D intake, lifelong, early menopause or early surgical removal of ovaries, use of corticosteroids and eating disorders, sedentary lifestyle, lack of exercise, alcohol abuse, tobacco use, high caffeine intake, high sodium intake, and low body mass index. Relationship to periodontal disease. A relationship exists between the redu reduced bone mineral density of osteoporosis and oral bone loss and skeletal and mandibular bone. Oral bone loss in the edentulous person pertains to periodontal bone destruction, residual ridge loss. Mutual risk factors of osteoporosis and periodontal disease are smoking, nutritional deficiencies, alcohol use, hormonal status. Osteoporotic bone is less dense and it's more readily absorbed. The symptoms. Osteoporosis develops over many years. A long asymptomatic period of bone change can occur with no clinical symptoms. Clinical symptoms include backache, stooping posture, the posture of an older adult with osteoporosis, uh, vertebral fractures or compression fractures that cause the spine to curve, fracture hip, compression fractures of the spine, ends of long bones, evidence of bone changes in the mandible, res residual ridge resorption. The treatment of medications. A number of medications with various mechanisms of action decrease bone resorption, increase bone formation, or both. Whichever regimen of medication is pres prescribed, successful treatment and prevention requires simultaneously intake of calcium and vitamin D. This phosphonates slows bone metabolism and increasing bone density. Selective estrogen receptor modulators inhibits bone resorption. Calcitonin inhibits bone resorption. Parathyroid hormone stimulates bone resorption bone formation, sorry. Treatment and prevention. Weight-bearing physical activity such as walking has beneficial effects on bone mass. Activities of daily living and physical activity require caution and preventive measures to avoid accidental falls. Avoid smoking and excessive alcohol intake. Severe involvement of the spine may require orthopedic support and medication for pain. Dental hygiene pan management considerations. Do not rush. Try to prevent falls. Provide extra time for positioning and provide cushioning. Taking bisphosphonates is, is a contraindication for dental surgery due to increased risk of osteonecrosis or bone destruction of the jaw. Health promotion opportunities exist for long-term prevention. Encourage smoking sensation, limited alcohol consumption, healthy lifestyle involving adequate calcium and vitamin D intake and regular physical activity. Sexually transmitted diseases. The most common STDs, chlamydia, syphilis, HIV, AIDS, genital herpes, gonorrhea, human papillomavirus, HPV. STDs are on the rise in the older adult population. Incidence of older po populations. The most common STD in this demographic is HIV AIDS, with an increase of new HIV AIDS cases in over 50 years of age. Factors that influence the increase in the numbers include Increased use of medications to treat erectile dysfunction. Increased divorce rates. People living longer and generally in better health. Sexually active senior women more prone to acquiring STDs due to thinning of the epithelium of the vaginal area. Diminished immune system. Increased number of older adults living in assisted living centers or senior housing communities. Cultural and generational differences may explain why older adults are not as knowledgeable about the need for safe sex practices. Older adults might not practice safe sex since the risk of pregnancy is eliminated. Dental hygiene management considerations. Medical referral or consultation. An appointment with the patient's physi physician is necessary to determine what medication is needed to treat the STD. Goals of dental hygiene care include open, non-judgmental communication, increased patient aware awareness of transmission of STDs, and importance of communication with the patient's physician. Respiratory disease. Older adults are at a higher risk for respiratory disease. Good oral hygiene practices can reduce the progression or occurrence of respiratory disease among older adult patients. Age-related disorders of the respiratory system. Pneumonia, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, or asthma. Dental hygiene management considerations. Monitor vital signs and adjust seating position as needed for comfortable breathing. Cardiovascular disease. Heart disease is common cause of death of older patients over the age of 65. Health promotion and healthy behaviors initiated early can prevent heart disease. Age-related disorders of the cardiovascular system include arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis, hypertension and postural hypotension, angina pectoris, myocardial infarction, congestion, congestive heart failure, heart valve disease, transient ischemic attack or a mini-stroke, cerebrovascular accident or a stroke. 
Dental hygiene management considerations. Monitor blood pressure, use of relaxation techniques, and lifestyle change. Oral changes associated with aging. Healthy tissue features of primary aging need to be separated from long-term effects of secondary aging due to chronic disease and medications. Soft tissues, lips, tissue changes, dry purse during open, opening results from the dehydration and loss of elasticity within the tissues. Angular colitis is not specifically an age-related lesion, but it is frequently as seen among older adults. The etiologic factors may be candidiasis and vitamin B deficiency. It appears as skin folds with fissuring at the angle of the mouth and can be related to reduced vertical dimension or inadequate support of the lips. Chelitis in conjunction with dentures is described later. Oral mucosa, atrophic changes. The tissue may become thinner and less vascular. With a loss of elasticity, a smooth, shiny appearance is related to thinning of the epithelium. Hyperkeratosis. White, patchy appearance of tissue may develop because of irritation from sharp edges of broken teeth, restorations, or dentures, and from the use of tobacco. Capillary fragility. Facial bruises and petechiae of the mucosa are common. The tongue, atrophic glossitis or burning tongue. The tongue appears smooth, shiny, bald, and with atrophied papilla. The condition is usually related to anemia that results from a deficiency of iron or combination of deficiencies. Deficiency anemia results from nutritional factors. Taste sensations. Taste buds are slower. The acuity of the perception of salt declines with age. The perception of sweet and sour does not decline with age. Olfactory acuity, which significantly affects taste, declines more than taste. Flavoring agents and spices can be added to foods instead of salt and sugar to enhance taste. Tongue cleaning increases taste perception. Sublingual varicosities. Clinical appearance, deep red or bluish nodulars, dilated vessels on either side of the midline of the ventral surface of the tongue. The significance, variscosities do not have a direct relationship to systemic conditions. Xerostomia, xerostomia, dryness of the mouth, is characterized by the absence or diminished quantity of saliva, prevalent in older adults, a symptom, not a disease entity. Lack of saliva and the effect of dry mouth are significant contributing factors to oral discomfort and disease, particularly dental caries. The cause of xerostomia includes systemic medications which provide the most common influence. Many drugs that are common prescription items produced by dry mouth as a side effect. Autoimmune diseases such as Schrogen syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, and systemic lupus erythematosus, diabetes, radiation to head and neck for cancer therapy, permanent damage to the salivary glands do result. Clinical symptoms include feeling of oral dryness, tongue sticks to the palate, difficulty with mastication, swallowing, and speech, impaired taste, burning, and soreness of the mucosa and tongue, oral effects of xerostomia, Heavy dental biofilm, materia alba, and debris accumulation can lead to increased severity of periodontal infections and demineralization of tooth structure, predisposition of dental caries, particularly root caries. Problems of denture wearing, dietary changes during eating may use increased quantities of liquid to soften food for swallowing. Oral candidiasis. Oral candidiasis is an infection of the oral mucosa tissue. Denture somatitis and angular colitis represent the two common forms. Candidiasis is associated with the use of antibiotics, head and neck radiation therapy, chemotherapy, steroids, and other immunosuppressive drugs. Medical conditions that alter the immune systems, including diabetes and HIV infection, permit overgrowth of candida organisms. Patients with xerostomia have an increased incidence of candidiasis. Teeth. The color. Darkening or yellowing is a result change in the underlying dentin. Color changes result from the long-term long-term use of tobacco and beverages such as tea and coffee, dark intrinsic stains from dental restorations as well. Dental pulp. Pulpal changes develop uh, as reactions to wear, dental caries, restorations, bruxism, and other assaults during the elderly person's long life. Narrowing of the pulp and root canals, increased deposition of secondary and tertiary dentin, progressive deposition of calcified masses, Attrition, signs of wear, which may be long-term effects of diet, occupational factors, or bruxism. Attrition may be accompanied by chipping teeth, may be seen more brittle. Abrasion, abrasion at the cervical third of a tooth may result from extended use of a hard toothbrush in a horizontal direction with an abrasive dentifrice. 
With current preventive measures, use of soft textured brushes, and attention to abrasiveness of dentifrices, future generations will be less likely to, likely to exhibit such tooth alterations. Root caries. Prevalence. Older adults have more root caries than any other age group, except in communities with natural fluoride or community with fluoridation. Root risk factors for root caries include exposed root surface due to periodontal infections that cause loss of attachment, horizontal toothbrushing technique result in abrasion, biofilm retention due to inadequate oral hygiene. Reasons include cognitive and physical disabilities that hinder biofilm removal, inadequate oral care received, faulty restorations and partial dentures, retain cariogenic food substances and biofilm. Xerostomia medications, high carb diet, frequency of snacking on fermentable carbs, combination of these factors in increase the risk of the effect of fluoride. Adults with long time res residence in a fluoridated community have substantially fewer root carious lesions than those in non fluoridated communities. The protective factor is essentially true for lifelong residents of areas where there is natural fluoride in the water. Prevention. Control of risk factors for dental caries is essential for older adults as it is for all age groups. Emphasis is placed on periodontal health because attachment loss with resultant root exposure needs to be prevented. Caries preventive agents need to be strongly recommended, including the professional application of fluoride varnish. The periodontium. Bone. Osteoporosis may be present. Depressed vascularity, a reduction in metabolism, and reduced he healing ability after affect the bone. Cementum. The average overall thickness of cementum at 20 years of age was 0 0.095 millimeters. Cementum from 60-year-old persons measured 0.215 millimeters. Gingiva. Gingival changes can be traced to the effect of infection or to anatomic factors. Gingival recession is common in older individuals. Predisposing factors. Lack of sufficient attached gingiva, malpositioned of teeth. Risk factors for periodontal disease, similar to young individuals, may be modified by chronic disease and medi medications. Clinical findings. The periodontal tissues reflect the health and disease of the patients over the years. Moderate periodontal disease may be more prevalent than advanced disease. The healthy periodontium, healthy tissue that have been maintained over the years, may have had a minimum of disease. The radiograph shows little, if any, attachment loss. The gingiva is firm and the appearance is normal. Probing reveals minimal sulcus depth with no bleeding. The teeth are not mobile. The patient with periodontal infection, neglect or omission of preventive measures and therapy over the years and may, be, may have resulted in a chronic periodontal infection with extension of tissue destruction into the bone, periodontal ligament, and cementum. Loss of attachment. Deep periodontal pockets, tooth mobility, and radiographic signs of periodontitis may be present. The treated periodontal patient. The tissue may show effect of the disease such as open interproximal embrasures. Areas of recession with exposed cementum may be evident. The teeth are not mobile, especially when occlusal analysis and adjustments has been featured. The dental hygiene care for the older adult patient. The dental hygiene process of care for the older adult patient is based on the individual needs as with all patients. Many older adults value oral health as a component of overall health and wellness. Care for the older adult patient needs to be planned in terms of comprehensive, not palliative treatment. Increasing numbers of the older adult population avail themselves of aesthetic dental services. Adaptations need to be made to the process of care when cognitive, sensory, or physical conditions limitations are present. Long-term maintenance of the prevention of oral disease is the basic objective. Barriers to care. Lack of perceived need is one of the most common reasons why older adults do not seek dental care. Older generations believed a decline in oral health was the result of the aging process. Economic and access barriers. Fixed income after retirement. Lack of dental insurance. Transportation problems. Functional disabilities affecting mobility. Limit access without assistance. Physical architectural barriers, accessibility to the dental office and clinic, restriction to access to care for institutional residents, wheelchair access, hazards such as small rugs, which can slide on polished floors, loose corners of rugs, which can be tripped over, and irregularities in floor levels need to be eliminated. Sitting for extended periods, keeping mouth open, and such might be difficult. Provide frequent opportunities to change positions. Consider several short appointments as opposed to extended appointments. Raise a chair to a sitting position slowly due to possibility of postural hypotension. The assessment. Patient history. 
Preparation of careful and detailed medical and dental history takes on particular significance. Suggestions for good communication include the following. Allow sufficient time for reviewing complex histories. Eliminate distracting background music or sounds. Sit facing the patient and speak clearly with a low tone of voice. Speak directly to the patient even when the caregiver is present. Do not call the patient by his or her name, first name unless the patient suggests doing so. So you would want to call them Mrs. Holsapple. Medications. Because of the prevalence of chronic diseases, older patients are the largest consumers of both prescription and over-the-counter medications. Drug usage and incidence of adverse drug reactions increase with age. Obtain a complete list. Include herbal and dietary supplements. Ask the patient to bring in either the bottles that contain the various medications or a written copy of the labels so a list may be kept in the patient's records. Reference for trucking drugs. Each practice center or clinic needs access to current references, such as the Physician's Desk Reference, Merck Manual, or Pharmacology Reference websites, LexiComp, specifically directed to dental practice. Review the list of medications at each continuing care appointment. Review the, the list of medications at each continuing care appointment. Review each medication to determine potential adverse side effects, effects on the oral cavity such as xerostomia and gingival hyperplasia. Possible drug interactions with products recommend or use during the appointment. Certain medications may require frequent bathroom breaks, vital signs, blood pressure is determined and recorded at each visit. Intraoral and extraoral examination. The need for careful periodontic examination of the oral mucosa from the lips to the throat is especially crucial for the older adult patient because of oral cancer occurs with increasing frequency with advancing years. Many oral lesions exist without the patient being aware of them. Document lesions and when indicated patient referral for biopsy is planned. Preventive care plan. Older adult patients may need frequent appointments to maintain a high level of health. The content of care plan will address the, the control of dental and biofilm and recommend fluoride use. Follow up to assess healing of gingival tissues and daily biofilm removal. Give printed oral health instructions to the partner or caregiver to be posted in the bathroom or where the patient will be performing oral self-care needs. Dental biofilm control. Implement the basic objectives of dental biofilm control. Infection needs to be eliminated and controlled. Factors affecting Adequate biofilm control include patients with cognitive, ment mental, and physical deficits that can provide a challenge to dental hygienists. Gingival recession with wide embrasures resulting from periodontal destructions provide a large surface area for biofilm retention. Exposed cementum with areas of abrasion in dental caries at the cervical third of the tooth can create undercut areas where special adaptations of biofilm removal devices is needed. Decreased saliva production reduces or eliminates the cleansing and lubricating effects of saliva. Exposed untreated cementum may hold biofilm more readily than enamel. A smooth root surface is less likely to hold biofilm, therefore biofilm removal efforts can be more successful. 
Restorations and prostheses provide more complex dentition and biofilm removal may require more time, patience, and motivation. Deficient restorations may have overhanging margins that provide areas for biofilm retention. Lack of dexterity related to disabling conditions resulting from chronic diseases such as arthritis and Parkinson's disease makes biofilm removal more difficult. Approach to instructions. Strategies to enhance communication with older adults are listed in one of the tables in this chapter. Suggestions for, for providing oral health instruction for the adult or patient uh, with specific characteristics are also listed here. Motivation through expression of sincere interest on the part of dental personnel can be influencing factors in helping the patient achieve better oral health. Allow sufficient time. Do not leave instructions until the end of the appointment. Keep the se session short and present small amounts of information at one time. When appropriate, include the caregiver. Carefully assess the patient's ability to perform each task. Avoid sudden changes or surprises. Base instruction on the patient's functional status. Determine what the patient already knows. Make changes gradually over time. Repeat reinforcement and evaluation are critical. Selection of dental biofilm removal devices. Use of a power toothbrush may, may help patients with impaired hand function. Power toothbrushes are often easier for caregivers to manage. Adaptations to alter the handle of a manual toothbrush are described later. Interproximal brushes are recommended for open gingival embrasures, and methods for using interproximal brushes are described later as well. Denifer se selection. Fluoride ingredients mandatory for all surfaces, including prevention for root caries, mild abrasive agent to prevent abrasion of root surfaces, and desensitizing ingredients for exposed dentinal tubules. Relief for xerostomia. Provide specific instructions for use of saliva substitutes. Instruction and motivation techniques are applied gradually and regularly at frequent intervals for best results. Periodontal care. Implementation of periodontal care include complete debridement of calculus and biofilm. Follow-up evaluation. The patient's cognitive, mental, and physical condition may be necessities for shorter appointments. Quadrant non-surgical periodontal therapy with anesthetic may be appropriate. Dental caries control. Assess their diet. Diet adjustment to eliminate cariogenic foods. Emphasis on prevention of root caries. Professionally applied topical uh, fluoride. Daily self-applied fluoride therapy. Chlorhexidine rinses and xylitol. Diet and nutrition. Dietary and resulting nutritional deficiencies are common in older people. Characteristic changes such as burning tongue, angular colitis, and atrophic glossitis may be related to vitamin B deficiencies. Factors contributing to dietary nutritional deficiencies include limited budget, not eating regular meals, frequently eating non-nutritionist snacks, lack of interest in shopping for or preparing food, acuteness of sense, taste, and smell is lowered, may seek highly seasoned or sweetened foods, inadequate masticatory efficiency because of tooth loss or dentures that no longer fit properly, adverse food selection may result from the social embarrassment over inability to chew, following dietary fads that provide only a limited and unbalanced diet, difficulty in swallowing, and alcoholism. Dietary nutritional considerations for older adult patients. Reduced need for calorie intake as a result of decreased energy needs to avoid overweight or obesity. Proteins, vitamins, minerals, and water are particularly important for body function repair and resistance to disease. Increased need for calcium, vitamin D, and folate. A necessary objective in geriatric nutrition is to slow or prevent the progression of diet-induced chronic diseases. Examples are atherosclerosis related to high dietary fat diets, anemias related to iron and folic acid deficiencies, osteoporosis resulting from inadequate intake of calcium and vitamin D. Fluoride intake over the years is beneficial in the prevention of osteoporosis and bone fractures, and water fluoridation is beneficial for direct application to the teeth. Instructions in diet and oral health. Dietary analysis by means of four or five day rec record of the patient's diet can provide information. Patients with cognitive or memory deficits may be unable to provide an accurate diary. Minimally, an accurate 24 hour food diary needs to be obtained. Recommendations for older adult patients are based on the, an establishing well-balanced diet, well diet with limited amounts of cariogenic foods. Provide patient and dietary educational materials. Refer older adults with complex medical conditions to a registered dietitian nutritionist. Patient motivation may be enhanced by discussing the relationship of dietary deficiencies. Documentation. Detailed medical history. Current vital signs. History of medications. Current radiographs. Extraoral and intraoral examination, dental history, detailed dental charting and periodontal clinical examinations, 
For each professional visit, a summary of current findings and planned treatment, as well as outcomes for previous appointment treatments are necessary. Thank <laughs> you.